Hello everyone, today we are going to be painting a lizard. I wasn't expecting it, but this is actually one of my favorite paintings I've ever done. I combined some super easy techniques in unique ways and I just can't wait to show you how I did it. Let's get right into it. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. I had it on my to-do list for quite some time and I think today is the day. And again, we've got this long canvas. And it's going to be another reptile. I've done one so far. I'm actually very fond of this one. This was, this was so much fun. My chameleon in the jungle. And today I'm planning to make a lizard. And also what I want to do, I'm going to tell you later. I don't want to spoil everything. I was looking at some lizards online and I don't know whether I want to make a gecko or a different lizard or sand lizard or a cross between them perhaps. It's perfect for long canvas. First thing we are going to do, I'm just going to sketch a lizard. And just to make sure that it fits my purpose, I am going to trace it here. I'm just going to go over with my 4B pencil. Oh, I didn't tell you. I'm planning to do a lizard with glue gun. Yes, with a glue gun. So see how that goes. Roughly, it doesn't have to be identical. I'm not copying, just sort of looking at it. Okay, so I won't bore you with this one. I'm just going to quickly sketch it. I think I'm happy with this. I am not going to do the tail now because I am going to position it similar way like I did to my octopus. I'm actually very fond of one of the tentacles going behind and underneath the canvas and that's what I'm planning for the tail. Let me just transfer it now quickly. Once I press it, it, it gets transferred so easily. I usually use my nails, but some of you may be like screaming, no, don't do that. You don't want the image to move, so you might want to tape it. That took me a minute, so now what about the tail? So the tail will go, since the lizard is going this way, the tail will curve here. How about that? Can we use the glue gun to make it nice? So let's start. The little fingers will not be the easiest, but it's definitely doable. You know those wispy bits that I usually say just wait for them to get cool and then you can peel them off. One of my lovely followers actually suggested a better way. You can use a hairdryer on low temperature and just heat them up and then they dissolve. So I might check that. So that was another suggestion. I learned so much from you lovely people. Thank you so much. I'm going to make the line thicker on the tail. You can see I'm turning so it's more comfortable so I don't have to struggle. Oh, they kind of got melted. I can I can see some of them, but they got stuck to the background. That's good. Oh well, I've learned something today. Awesome. And now color-wise, as I said before, my lizard is like a combination of a gecko and a different lizard or lizards. I found a cute one. This one's got a really cool pattern. So we've got greens, browns, a bit of like a different greeny bluey. Oh, look. But I'll go for these colours. These are the lizardy colours I picked. All the greens were from my previous painting when I was doing Queen Anne's lace. So these were the leftover greens and I mixed them from with pale green, burnt amber, uh, titanium white. These are my own mixes of those three colours. Now we've got burnt sienna here, mid-orange, 
This is mixed with Arteza Lemon Yellow and Cadmium Yellow by Liquitex. This is Arteza's Gold, one of my ever favourite. Doesn't look impressive now, but once it's dry, it's absolutely stunning. And this is my Cadmium Orange. Now, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an easy-to-use online platform that you can use to build your own website. Choose from hundreds of stunning templates so you can confidently make a website that looks great on both desktop and mobile. I had a lot of fun finally designing my own website and it was so simple. Your website updates automatically so you can spend less time worrying and more time creating. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you are ready to share your vision with the world, go to squarespace.com forward slash abcreative to get 10% off a website or domain. Make that site you've always dreamed of a reality today. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so I've got to pause here for a moment and what well, this attempt did not work at all. So I started spreading my paints randomly across the body of the lizard and then my mistake was then I swiped halfway through and then there was a line created. So I didn't like it and I wiped everything off and decided to start again. If you think I'm upset, I am not. I'm actually not. I'm really curious if I can pull it off. The one problem that I'm kind of a bit worried about is there any silicone residue here or not? because I didn't, I didn't wash it. So if it doesn't work, it's because I didn't remove all the silicone. And in which case I'll have to wash the whole canvas. That's a learning curve for me. Absolutely. So I'm just going to quickly cover it with colors again. <laughs> but I just want to be very clear that it doesn't really matter. You just spread them on randomly, wherever you wish. This time I'm really quick because if it goes wrong, then I might be upset. Okay, attempt number two. Right, now the moment of truth. If the body won't work, that's it. Oh gosh, this is fun. Okay, I just have to put more here. That's it. There's no other option. I just need to put more brown here on the head as well and swipe all together because I'll never cover that area properly. Gently. Now we'll get more brown this section. This is called perseverance. Uh, at least I'm okay with the swipe, you know? And as I said, don't worry, the background is going to be painted anyway, remember? Now I'm going to use a bit of coconut hair serum, which is a dimethicone product. Just making a line here. And that was an old comb, and I just cut it. And I'm going to dip it in the silicone. was going to change direction, but I will not. It's working. Mm, that's gorgeous. Look at the beautiful, but oh my goodness. Ah, you know what? It was worth missing because this is perfect and I am happy. Let's just put some more, more silicone. This lizard had a little bit of a bite, you know? Oh my goodness, this is so fun. Okay, legs, 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 no. Okay, 
the end is going to be completely dark it's because this one is getting darker so obviously this section has to be pretty dark as well and now there will be hardly any cells because it's so small I can go to sleep happy this is my dry lizard can you see the gold and those cute tiny tiny lizard cells now it's time for the background yes i could paint it but i thought let's make it super exciting and different i know you like when i do different stuff so i found that i had this product i used it some time ago in a, in my video actually one of my favorites but not very popular i'm not sure why with two cute penguins in the antarctic or the south pole so you can see the link here and this is the first time that I used this crackle paste and I thought it was absolutely awesome. Before I used it on the wooden board but I've never tried it on the canvas. Hopefully it's going to work so we are going to apply base layer first and then once it's wet the top one. Now the base layer is white and I can put any pigments I want and this one I actually like the colour sort of rocks cracked rocks type now the ideal solution would be putting dark background and lighter top but i don't really want the background to take away from a lizard that was the point so i thought i would go for less contrast more muted tones so i am going to scoop some of it into here and put some pigments so i've got yellow ochre and a bit of gold maybe very interesting texture because it's soft but yet it's kind of rubbery I can't put too much because my lizard, you see the edges, they're not so high. So that's why I will need it a bit flatter, up to one millimeter probably. Also, I have never mixed any color with it, so I'm very curious. I'm not going to put too much. Okay, see how it mixes. What do you think of this color? A bit. Should I add a bit more? I'll add a bit more. In the end, I added a drop of orange just for good measure. And I can only see that I will have problems applying between the toes, because I've, I've never seen anybody applying the paste with the design on, usually to the background, but in this case, there was no way I could put this on a cracked background. And you know how I love experimenting anyway. Now I have to apply it and then quickly apply the crackle paste because it cannot be dry. It has to be applied wet on wet so I need to apply it as quick as I can and as accurately as I can. I'm sure by toe number 10 I will have figured how to do it properly. I've decided I'm not going to go so close because I can always go in between with a little bit of paint later. By the way, thank you very much. I'm not sure I mentioned the person who requested a lizard. I'm very grateful for all your suggestions, so please do send them. I've got a long list now. I see you should apply like probably two millimeter, up to two millimeters. Now I'm going to apply the top. Okay, so shall we start? Okay, it's not not difficult to apply. I'm sure it's going to be interesting. You know, it has to. It has to be. This is fun. So we have everything. We've got pouring. We've got 3D. Oh, I sometimes forget to say that I receive so many pictures of your lovely work. You know, when you make something similar, having watched my tutorials, I always ask that you send me a picture via Instagram at AB Creative Official because every Friday I share those photos that my followers send me and I love it. I absolutely love it because I can see so many interesting pieces done by you. I might use my brush just to add some here. I somehow thought it would be more difficult adding the second layer but it's actually not. Oh by the way if you are interested and trying out the paste there is a link in my description and also 15% off any Elicam product with my code AB15 that's a discount code 
and this is not the only product that I'm going to use. I'm going to use something on the lizard, as you probably imagined. Our fingers are the most universal, best tools ever. He's ready. So I'm leaving him and I'm going to wash my tools. I'll probably show you tomorrow how it cracks. I couldn't be happier with those cracks, to be honest. I, they surpassed my expectation. They look exactly what I wanted. I wanted like really dry earth. And yes, I know it's not realistic and the gaps are lighter, but it's what I wanted. That's my sort of artistic vision. Loving the lizard and the contrast. And I am going to pour resin now on my little baby here. With the glossy, wet looking lizard and the very, very dry earth. What do you think? I'm just kind of wondering whether I should add a hint of an eye or not. I don't want to paint an eye, I'm just some highlights. And I'll leave it like that and I'll start mixing resin. Well, in the end, I just added a little bit of brown here and now I will leave it. The rest to the imagination. This is the resin I am using, Mastercast by Elikem. This is perfect for any type of artwork. Please do wear gloves and if you're using resin at all, just use a respirator. This one is not volatile, but I still I still recommend respirator. It's one to one. That means one part of resin to one part of hardener. And altogether, I'm going to have 150 milliliters. Now you have to mix it really well for at least three minutes, scraping the bottom and the edges. When I'm mixing, uh, I actually thought that some of you might might want to ask me a question. Did I clean the lizard? Yes, I did. I actually wiped the lizard uh, with a soapy sponge because I wanted to remove the silicone residue. And of course, I, I let it dry. So it's clean and dry now. While you're mixing, you'll notice plenty of bubbles, but we are going to pop them later on. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in any of the products I use in any of my videos, they are always linked in the video's description. You have, you have links. I am hoping the resin is not going to drip off the tail, but just in case, I might put a little bit of masking tape here. I'm ready to pour. So I have to be very careful because I don't want to pour over, you know, beyond the glue borders. just with those little paws and the tail. I prefer sort of dragging it because I'm a bit worried if I want to apply some resin here, what if it drips outside? It's actually so nice that it, the borders hold the resin really nicely. Now I'm going to repeat it with the three other ones. Once I fill it up, I'm going to torch very gently now I'm very carefully adding some more. I want I want it to create a dome. On the other hand, I am super careful that it doesn't break the barriers. And of course the tail is left. So far I just love the effect. You know, super precision work, like with jewellery making. I actually occasionally do make pieces of jewellery. You can see some of them on my website, avcreativeofficial.com. I haven't got all my products yet. You can even see the lizard. So I'm going to torch the air bubbles now. I want to show you how they disappear. You see the leg? It's amazing, isn't it? Now this one. Those colours. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm super excited about it. I'll probably check it in like 15 minutes and I'll see if there are any more bubbles for me.
Well, there we are. This lizard really special to me. Let me know in the comments what you thought of it. I'm so happy with how each part worked out. The intricate little cells, 3D glue gun work, and the desert effect of the crackle paste. Oh, if you haven't done it yet, I've got a new website, so please check abcreativeofficial.com where you can find some items for sale. And also don't forget to click the link in the description if you would like 10% off a site of your own. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.